two, one, go. What's going on, guys? Coach Geeky. And Coach Beckett, back for another episode <laughs> of Champagne Games. Uh, today, we're talking all about me. <laughs> the world is Yes. <laughs> All about Beckin going into improvement season. So obviously the first half of this year, we were talking about you transitioning from building season into prep for your first regional show. And then, you know, your journey to the national stages and ultimately getting that IFBB pro card you have behind you. I still can't believe it, dude. I like look at it. I'm just like, wow. And then I think, like, I'm very grateful that I um, I got it and then I moved here. And now I'm, like, I feel, it makes me feel, like, more badass in my gym. <laughs> yeah. I don't you're know. The new, you're the new IFBB pro. Right, right. The gym. <laughs> you're not just some random bikini competitor. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with being an NPC, though. <laughs> no, no no enjoy it it was so fun i mean eight shows in the mpc like that's what i needed to happen like the joy in the journey you know and finding out who i was along the way and that is hopefully what will happen to all of the npc competitors as they're going to get their pro cards it's not that's another thing I just want to add to this. Like this didn't change my life at all. I'm still back in. I didn't uh, immediately become like a millionaire. Uh, <laughs> I no one you didn't gives, get all these sponsorship deals. No, no one gives fuck who I am. Still, like yeah, it's the, and if I had like I talked to oh, where were where were they talking about this? Um. Maybe it was on Celeste's podcast, but when I was first started competing and my ex and I were going through all the bullshit that we were going through, he always asked me, like, what's going to make you happy? And like getting my pro card. Not the case. Like if if I had still been in the same situation, like that still wouldn't have made me happy with my life. But in the meantime, while I was going for it, I was also reaching other goals and becoming like who I actually am as a person and being my true self finally. And this is just icing on the cake. Yeah, that was, you know, that journey is, you know, you don't, you didn't do it for the clout. You didn't Mm -hmm. do it to, you know, cover up any unhappiness. It was just kind of a seamless, you know, growing into the back end that you are now and now and you happen to get your pro card with that yes as like a you did it you know um okay well when you sent me that post the other day talking about and then talked about reddit I hadn't I I must have deleted it from my phone um so I redownloaded it to try to find it and then I was like "Hmm, I'm gonna search my name in this (laughs) And there was like a, a post about Holly Baxter, it's your new IFBB pro. And then someone had commented, this is her compared to the overall winner back in Mickelson. I was like, that's right. Um, but of course there was a comment. I prefer Holly's look here a hundred percent. I'm like, well, the judges didn't. So. Yeah. dude. I So I was listening to a podcast that mm-hmm. had Holly on it. Um, if she, li- I mean, she's probably not listening to this, but she was like, yeah, so many people came up to me and said, I thought you should have been the overall winner and all this stuff. I'm like, girl, get off your high horse. Obviously, I am super happy that Beckin got the overall, but like, it's not anybody else's decision besides the judges. The judges wanted you to be the bikini standard for junior Nats. And so they rewarded that. I'm sorry that you're a little butt hurt that you did not get the overall. Like, don't go why, like, don't take like that from you. Right. From back in it. I, cause I, I would have been livid at you if you would have said the same shit, you know, if you were got second in the overall and you were like, uh, I just think I like my look better. And if like any of my girls, like 
athletes or people that I know would have said some of the same shit to me, like, oh, back and should have won the overall, blah, blah, blah. I would have been like, can we stop? Like the person who won the overall deserved it. And that's the person that the judges picked. Yeah, that's what it boils down to, the judges. Like that, and that's another thing, like with anybody competing, like if someone tells you, oh, you should have got this, well, apparently not. Like yeah. your family wants to like fucking stroke your ego. Everybody wants to stroke your ego, but this is the sport and you win some, you lose some. And yeah. it's not on anyone but the judges to decide. But it's also like, I mean, I feel great about it, obviously. I won the overall. And it's you, like politically, like picking her, she has a lot of followers. Like that would have been great for her, like the NPC. But, but it's just you and me, baby. <laughs> me and you. There was no like political side of it. Like it was my physique. And, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, okay. This pissed me. The that just off. like that pissed me off so much when I listened to that podcast. I I, I tried not to text you immediately because I was like, it. I don't need to destroy her energy <laughs> just because I'm living. I, I I almost wanted to reply to Tom and be like, "Well, you're not a judge, so." But I. That's the thing I've learned. Like, just fucking hold your tongue. Like, no one. You don't need to voice your opinion on everything. Um, and you don't need, I don't need to defend myself. I won that fair and square. Um, and, uh, well, even when I was in line for the pro debut and the other girl, like one of the other girls, I'm standing right fucking in front of her. She was like, said to Holly, I thought you were going to win the overall. Like, I want to turn around and be like, I'm right fucking here. Hi. I would I would have done that because like put her in her place. Well, then like I was we were talking and oh, I, this is like talking shit now, but well, not really. We were talking in line and I was like, I'm really thirsty. And she was like, "There's water over there." I'm like, I can't drink water right now. Like we're about to go on stage. Like yeah. You would have started, you would have needed to pee for how long you were up there. <laughs> right? Yeah, I'm just going to go chug a glass of water right now. Like, thanks, coach. Yeah. <laughs> Goodness. <laughs> All right. Well, enough, enough bullshit talking. Um, let's kind of, so now, obviously, you got your pro card. Um, and you, we, you did your pro debut and your first pro debut. We're going to say yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, we're practice gonna... pro debut. Yes. Practice. Um, so let's talk a little bit about transitioning out of that long prep, um, into, you know, your, your reverse and your building season right now. Yeah. Um, so it was really different. Well, first of all, like prep was different because not different but it was like very new because it had just moved and so then I was like getting trying to figure out my routine there and then when um now I'm trying to see into off season I moved again so it's like I had to come up with a whole new routine basically and like get into that so I'm not saying it was hard and but I'm very glad that I wasn't in prep anymore like it was the timing was perfect of when my lease was up on my old place but so very glad that I wasn't in prep and didn't have to like deal with that moving into a new like transition with that because it's it it's possible obviously and you do what you need to do when you need to do it but I was grateful that I didn't have to like be super like on with my shit obviously I still was not like it's not like I just went from zero to 100 um with like changing foods up but so just getting into a new routine and switching back into the life mode um even but life mode for me is still tracking my macros every day and like following a meal plan that is me 
tracking my macros, I just copy paste every day because I eat the same shit every day and I love it. Um, but just finding a new routine with um, like my training and everything and work, that's like my focus has definitely switched to I need to like build my business because during prep, I wasn't like doing a lot of outreach or there was a time like that three month like from St. Louis to junior nats I wasn't like getting new clients or yeah you were like to. you were taking care of what you needed to for your current yeah. clients but you weren't trying to actively grow and mm -hmm. build yeah so it's switched a lot to work mode and honestly like just this week I find like six weeks after I finally feel like I've made the transition and I've gotten into a good routine for myself. So yeah. that feels good. Um, but just like we've talked about before, it's just dials that get turned up and down. I were building up my food. I'm still training. I have a new gym that I like better than my old one, even though it's busier. Um, but it's also like, it sucks coming out of prep. Um, and like get it building up your strength again because I do feel like a little weak ass bitch in the gym and I want to like go be just be back to where I was at in the thick of my off season last year but we know that's not going to happen so being patient with that and not ego lifting um because I really don't want to hurt myself and focusing a lot more on recovery so that when I do prep again like my body feels good and I don't yeah. feel like an 80 year old woman <laughs> you don't feel like you're in your 30s yeah <laughs> unfortunately I have been sitting a lot more lately um so I'm still being really intentional about I'm going on well like I walk to my gym every morning to go sit in the sauna and then I walk on the treadmill a little bit because if I don't do that like I'm not going to get any steps in I think I think it was last Thursday, I ended up having like a call that I didn't know about. So then I just took a rest day um, and then worked all day. And I think I got like 2000 steps that day <laughs> because if you work from home, like, and I don't, I don't have my walking pad out <laughs> right now. You don't live in a big mansion where you're having to go up all these stairs or whatever. No, I don't. <laughs> I but go from my office like to the kitchen, around. to my office, to my kitchen. <laughs> That's it. That's all I got. Yeah. Um, so being intentional about my steps, my water, uh, still all of the things that we do in prep other than my cardio. Is short. Well, it's not very much shorter than it was at the end of prep, but um, yeah, I want to like be active and move my body and still feel good make sure my digestion is good which it has been because I'm like in a routine with my food um mm -hmm. I got my cycle back which hey just recently so that was great um I lost it in March I think so I'm pretty happy and I'm only I'm like well obviously I have more freedom um, but that doesn't mean I'm being an asshole about it. And I feel like I'm doing a pretty good job of like controlling that and limited it, limiting it to basically the weekends. But if I had like a, if I wanted to go out to eat during the week with my sister, I could do that and like macro that in. Um, but yeah, right now I'm six weeks post show this morning. I was 5.6 pounds above my stage weight so and we're building up my food yeah um so getting into like that's fun to see how my body is responding to that too like just want to be a freaking unit when prep starts again and get that as high as possible um what else but yeah I feel good I mean I don't Obviously, lines fade, and I'm not as shredded as it was, but that's another thing that my long off-season taught me. You know, like, I felt so good 
at the end of it, even with I'm being like 140 ish pounds, yes. and I was like confident, I was feeling myself. And then in prep, I was obviously feeling myself. And then um, now it's it's like I still love myself, and I'm not like fucking bummed about how I look or anything. Mm-hmm. I know that it's not healthy to be that lean, and that's why I got my period back because I'm not that lean anymore. So I'm I'm a healthy woman. <laughs> I think that's what you know. Um... I learned during my improvement, this past improvement season with Ben too. Like I never thought I would be comfortable at 140 pounds and I'm like three inches shorter than you. Mm -hmm. So like we were putting on the mass, putting on the beef. Um, And now like being lean again, I'm like, it's going to be, I think even more mentally okay when I know, okay, I know that I can get back down to my stage leanness again from 140 pounds. It's not like my body forgot what that's like. Um, so I, I'm excited for that. Um, I, I don't want to be necessarily as thick as what I was. Um, but it's, it's good to know that like, I'm still okay. You know, yeah. nothing, nothing really happened. Like it wasn't wrong. I didn't have to buy new clothes, right? you know, it, everything was just a, a little bit tighter. And mm-hmm. right now things are just a little bit looser. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. That, I mean, all my clothes that I was wearing in prep still fit me. I don't imagine that I'll, I'm not probably going to get up to 140 again. I mean, who knows? It doesn't really matter, you know, like the weight. Maybe yeah, I'll be there if I grow my fucking glutes ten pounds. <laughs> that's where, that's where we're, we're, put, that, we're putting. Yeah, that that's our. Here. That's I guess a good topic. Like our main focus is upper glutes, as always. More yeah. arm mass. <laughs> yeah. Um. You yeah. just have long. You have long limbs. I do. This is true. <laughs> I was talk. Who was I talking to? It might have been Brittany or Alexa or both of them probably. Um, but like me and Alexa are very short and compact. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and we have shorter limbs where you know it's easier to plump muscle yes. and fullness there as opposed to like taller individuals like. Um, you're not even like that tall. It's like, I think you're still like a couple sh- inches shorter than Brittany, but y'all mm-hmm. both have long limbs. So it's it just takes longer. It takes longer to, to fill those in. Like yeah. that's why some of the most successful bodybuilders are like, like actual, bo- like male bodybuilders are on the short side because they have like those shorter limbs. Mm-hmm. That's not saying that you can't be a tall bikini athlete or don't take my, don't twist my words. Don't <laughs> twist our words. <laughs> I'm tired. Yeah, it does take a little bit more time to yeah. grow and fill out your long, lean muscles. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously like we want our, you know, reverses and, you know, post show to be, you know, pretty perfect, but that's not life. So would it, would it have been great for you to not have to move right after prep and you didn't have, you know, worrying about that and transitioning into this new thing. And you could literally just focus on reversing and focusing on the business, but you know, life, it happens and you did what you could with the situation that you were in you didn't just say fuck it no and also what has helped is my long off season once again coming through for the win like I don't have that emotional connection to food where I like I've n- I have not binged on anything at all like I've n- I haven't had some, like a moment where it's like, wow, I really ate too much and overdid it. And I ate like four crumble cookies or something like that's not going to happen. You didn't even have like a post-show treat, you know? No. uh, Whatever you ate at that restaurant and (laughs) 
<laughs> that was so a fucking shrewd po boy. <laughs> like, and like it wasn't even good. And then we had um you had like French toast the next morning. Yeah. It's not like you had all of these cookies and made brownies and candy and oreos and all the processed foods that you feel like you need post immediate post show like you didn't have that Mm -hmm. yeah (laughs) because once you feed once you feed that beast it's hard to quiet it is one thousand percent like once you give your body that dopamine rash, it's like more, more, more. Mm-hmm. Um, so I feel like, <laughs> oh God, I'm sorry. I'm watching someone walk their dog and she had high heels on and it looks like she's wearing sweatpants. But I think they're like work pants. <laughs> <laughs> Random aside. <laughs> but yeah, I feel really good about how I'm handling even like going out to eat and the day like I don't see that as like a whole day to just fuck around it's like okay I'm gonna eat some normal meals and then like normal meals breakfast lunch or like front load protein and be smart about what I'm eating and only get what I really want and usually it's not something that like I still I don't want pizza I don't want pasta like give me a good sandwich like that brisket grilled cheese so i good. totally go for a sandwich right now God, even if it's sandwich can't be beat. um but yeah i i feel good about my relationship with food and how i have handled post-show i i told i think it was like the week after i moved and my family came and helped um and then I went out to a restaurant like that was like my post-show meal and that was like two weeks later um and I don't feel deprived obviously my calories are pretty they were pretty high at the end prep and they're just getting higher so like when you have that to work with that helps as well yeah (laughs) basically I suggest taking a long off season Figuring yourself out, um, healing your relationship with food if that needs to happen uh, so that you're not feeling deprived. And then just like having a healthy prep, like even during prep, I wasn't feeling like I'm about to go off the rails here. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm not an alcoholic, but I did really want some drinks sometimes. Because <laughs> <laughs> you just need something to take the edge off. Yeah. <laughs> um. But I mean, I think it it just goes to show like you're more mature in the sport because you've been in it for, you know, several years now. You've went through several, you know, um, building seasons, cutting seasons. You've been plugged ac- actively working with your coach through those, you know, um, building seasons as well, which I think is extremely important. So, you know last year we did work on your relationship with food and we, you know, tried some different things to, you know, help you set yourself up for a good start to your prep this year. Mm -hmm. And, you know, now we're just continuing to just fine tune everything, um, as we get you ready for, you know, your, your rookie season. Yeah. Which we'll see, like we briefly talked about this in check-ins this week, but probably next summer so I mean we'll see what happens with my life but we're definitely not quitting competing after getting my pro card um so I'm so excited for next year I'm sure it'll be next year (laughs) why wouldn't it yeah yeah um but yeah what else was I gonna say oh I think I was just going to say, like, it is nice to have the focus switch to, like, doing other things that I love as well. And there's seasons of your life where you can have to focus on different things and you need to be adaptable to that and work towards what you want. Yeah, yeah. Both life and 
competing goals. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> um, I think that's it. But, yeah, it's been a great I, transition. I feel good. Uh, I mean, I'm still. I feel like I'm still on a high from winning. Um, and then I'm getting my blood work done in a couple weeks. Don't forget to get your blood work done. So that'll be eight weeks post-show. We'll see where we're at there. Make sure that everything is good, which I feel like it should be. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> we gonna see. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's all I got. Yeah. So if you have any questions about Beck and DM her all the stupid questions. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love it. Um, yeah, you can find me on Instagram at Beckin underscore I am Biggie Pro. Please keep the stupid questions to a minimum um, because it will get screenshot and sent to Kiki. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> Facts. Facts. And you can find her on Instagram. You can, yeah, you can find me on Instagram at Kikers Laugh IFBB Pro. Um, I have a little bit more tolerance for BS questions, but <laughs> if they are, if they are dumb, I'm still totally also sending them to back in too. So <laughs> it's a package deal. Always. Always. Yeah. If you have any uh, uh, topics you'd like us to discuss, let us know and give us a five-star rating and review. Let us know what you think. Champagne. <laughs> Another episode of Champagne Gains. We are out. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> What's up, guys? Coach Kiki here. I just wanted to thank you for listening to this episode of Champagne Gains. If you loved this episode, please make sure you do all of the things. Like, subscribe, give us a five-star rating and review, and share with your champagne bestie. Champagne Gains is also brought to you by Coach Kiki LFG Gym Gear. Unlock the full power of your workouts with Coach Kiki's Let's Fucking Grow hip bands, long resistance bands, cable ankle straps, and hip thrust pads. For all of your sprinkle booty gains, check out CoachKikiLFG.com. Thanks, guys. Cheers.